gentlemen, welcome to another Loot Grid here on Past Each of Skin. Uh, we've got another little one, and of course, they're all very, very late this month, so bad crit. Bad Loot Grid. You are mean. You're terrible. You're wrong. You've done something bad to me. Well, let's see what's inside you. Flip it open! Okay! Well, this month's crit was power, and obviously we've got someone sitting on the top here. Oh, let's see where we go. Let's go to the wide! How's it going? What's crack, wheeze? It's good to see you again. I am sweating my balerics off because it is so warm. All right, using studio lighting is great and all, but using studio lighting in the middle of the summer, I have not planned this through. Our first item of today's crate of power is a glove of power. Now, uh, it's a little bit late for me to actually point this out, but it has actually been recalled. This oven mitt of power based to look like the Infinity Gauntlet, which reminds me of like, I think it was Thinkgeek who actually had a similar styled item a while back for sale and it sold out so quickly that nobody was happy with them. But um, yeah. Fendi Gauntlet. All the gems. This has been recalled by Lucrate uh, because even just looking at it, this is not a very... Um, it doesn't feel like an actual glove you can use as an oven mitt. And I think they may have made a marketing mistake whenever they did this, but because <laughs> they were probably meant to say this is for like vestigial looking cool, looking like Thanos only. So uh, they messed that up really badly and now we've got a, a recall on one of the units. I this will be the first recall they've done, so I'm curious to find out what they're going to do to figure out with this because um, this is a major fuck up. This is, this is the kind of thing where people can actually get hurt. It's not like a, a bad threading on a shirt or whatever, but it's just something that can actually damage people's lives. So I'm a little bit concerned for them. Going back into the grid here and seeing what we got. Okay, we got another t-shirt. Let's see what this t-shirt actually is. Back out to the wide. T-shirts, t-shirts everywhere. Always a delight. What one do we get today? Oh, I'm not too sure I know what it is. Yeah. All right, well, it's a Loot Crate official t-shirt. Oh, I know exactly what this is. Check it out. Oh, let's like see if I can get my arms right for this one. There we go. Uh, no. Normally I get this actually right. I actually been able to lift this up and show it. Huh. There we go. I was wondering why my arms were going in front of my face. It is a Warcraft t-shirt. That's pretty cool, actually. I like the outline of the orc on it. I'm assuming it's actually the orc and the warrior in the inside. You know, he's actually like the negative space that they're using for the human soldier versus the orcs. The Warcraft movie has, of course, come out now and is not doing well in theaters compared to what was expected of it. I'm really worried about that because Blizzard um, are taking a big risk on taking their IPs out to the public domain for film to be criticized and stuff. And um, they made a weird choice with the Warcraft movie because if you don't know, it's actually more based on the original Warcraft games, the RTS series that came out in the early 90s, before a lot of you were actually born, I'm sure. The, um, the Warcraft series were a really popular RTS, which originally was meant to be a Warhammer licensed game until uh, Wizards of the Coast pulled the license out from underneath them at the last minute and left them in a situation where they had no way of actually, you know, uh, to, making anything else so they had to actually just build their own universe and that's been expanded upon over the years from warcraft to warcraft 3 then on to the world of warcraft games being played everybody's played for the last 10 or so years i'll be right back that was an interesting edit um some reason one of the auto powered things on my devices here in the house decided to turn itself on <laughs> really well timed i'm not in the mood for anything else going wrong today so let's move on to the next item Yes! This is nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Check it out! Look at it! Dragon Ball! It's a number four Dragon Ball. With Shenlong around it. Oh, I love this! This is cute and adorable! Now, I told you guys before I don't really like plushies, but this one kind of like wins my heart a little bit because it's actually a wee chain hanging one. I'd actually, yeah! I'm all. Bag is another toy. I've been tempted to actually hang that from my camera bag whenever I'm walking around. That's pretty nice. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It was weird that I didn't know what they were going to do with the Dragon Ball th theming for the uh, object in this. Uh, Shenlong is um, an important character from the Dragon Ball series. If you don't know, Dragon Ball is named after it because of these Dragon Balls, because of this Dragon Ball. There's seven of them, and whenever you get them all together, this dude appears and allows you to commit one wish. Now, the wish that you want isn't limited genie style, so you can bring people back from the dead, you can do whatever the hell you want. It's just unlimited power for one request. Which tends into being like, bring back all the friends who have died in the last series in Dragon Ball. Sorry to spoil that for you if you're worried about people dying. Um, the Dragon Ball series Super is on at the moment, and it's like about 50 episodes in. 
I'm sorry, Temple of Sith, I don't watch it. I used to watch Dragon Ball whenever I was a kid, especially Dragon Ball Z and GT. And um, to have that continued on the new series, <laughs> I'm not too concerned about it because I'm just worried that it'll turn into what the original Dragon Ball series was, which was hundreds upon hundreds of episodes of people going, Aah! and screaming for an entire episode while they powered up, waiting for all the side plots to finish. But um, beside that, right? That's kind of cute. Shenlong. You can't beat that. That's pretty cool. Alright, back into the break. What have we got here? Yes, Qfig. Now, I'm pretty sure Qfig have signed up a deal with Loot Crate. Um, there's a Qfig that was inside the Deadpool Crate. Qfig, I think, do the crate for Firefly as well. They do, um, like, my wee girl back here and the little guy sitting here. I think they're actually all Qfig designs. So I'm not surprised to get another one of these. Uh, this one's an Age of Ultron themed one because of power. It's going to be the Incredible Hulk. And it looks pretty cool. It's just a raging Hulk position. Let's see if we get ourselves open here. Tip, get out of the way, Tip. That's ah! yeah, just a classic Tip. Yeah. Right. What have we got here? Yeah, cool. Essentially, the animated raging Hulk. I like that little design. Check it out. Like the look. Let's get that so we can close and see if we can get inside it and get a proper design look at it. No, there we go. Check it out. Look at him spinning around. Look at him. That's actually a pretty cool design in the Hulk. Uh, the intentional kind of like disproportionating of the figure reminds me a lot of the uh, superhero or Marvel superhero show, you know, the kids one. But um, still like the design. Kind of like the same disproportion they did on the Deadpool figure, which we have sitting over there. So, do you know what? This guy's going to go back into our shelf of heroes, and he's going to join the rest of them. I think I might actually put Deadpool next to him now, because they're actually like the right scale figures to be sitting next to each other. Because it's been, he's been sitting over there for a long time on his own, just hanging out with his lady friend. So, um, yeah, I might actually move him around. Right, let's see what else is in here. Of course, we have our loot pin for the month of power, which, I don't know, what is that? Am I looking at it the wrong way around? No, it looks like a robot. I don't recognize the robot's design. But, um, it looks kind of like a power suit. Kind of looks weird, but it's got a Loot logo on the front of it. It's just essentially a giant mecha of some sort that is actually related to the Loot Pin. Very cool. Now well, you go to the side here. Let's take a look inside the booklet. As always, the booklet has wonderful little designs and stories and information. What's interesting in this one this month? An exclusive interview with Warcraft Star, how to get superpowers, sounds muffins of death. Mmm, delicious muffins of death. And look at Hulk's history, a guide to infinity gems and fun game and more. Alright, so the big problem is that, of course, the uh, muffin making is, shouldn't be done with that particular one. So let's take a quick look to see what is going on in here. Um, there's an exclusive deck for that uh, Word Gush game, which is, of course, you can uh, scan something here. You know, there's a code for it and you have to type it in and you get that. Not too bad. Uh, there's a review or an interview with Vermintide. Luke Gaming? Why is Luke Gaming doing one of those? Hmm, it's weird. Luke Gaming article on this. So the Mega Create for this month, right, was a Sony PlayStation 4, uh, Dragon Ball Z uh, skins for your console and your controllers, a one to six scale figure of Thanos sitting in his throne, which looks pretty badass to be honest. Uh, Cinematic Universe Blu-ray collection, a Canon Power Shot camera, and a poster of Warcraft signed by Duncan Jones and the cast. And the mini crates were an Incredible Hulk apron, Dragon Ball Z earbuds, and a Cupid Deadly Murloc solar ba solar what solar body. So I'm assuming it's actually like a little alarm clock or whatever. That's kind of huh? Okay. Uh, how to get superpowers? Um, blah, 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 people's words of powers, muffins of death recipe, interview, and that was about it. Oh, and the loot pins DLC. What is this? Oh, right. So the loot pins design is actually based after Battleborn. So I'm taking a look here. Uh, battle unique code to unlock rare loot in Battleborn. Oh, right. So that's kind of interesting. So they actually get loot rare downloads for Battleborn. You actually can use a code from loot. Great. That's actually not too bad because I enjoyed Battleborn. Battleborn and Overwatch kind of came out around about the same time. And Battleborn has a much more... Um, I'd say Battleborn would be more comparable to Smite than it is to... Um, Overwatch, but less like LOL that Smite is, and more like a single player campaign that also has PvP. It's kind of, um, there, there's a, there's actually like a PvE 
story mode that you're working your way through campaign missions where you team up with other people. Um, I played a few games in the beta and I think I completed one mission and then another mission I got abandoned by my team and left alone so I was essentially uh, failing miserably. Uh, the Battleborn game is fun. Uh, in fact, the actual picture they have here is one of the characters I enjoy playing as, the Archer, because um, long range and support and damage works for me. So yeah, hmm. Oh yeah, they actually have an article here which is a list of Dragon Ball Z power levels. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. This is the power levels of all the characters. I think it's everybody compared to Krillin, which is kind of cool. Check it out. So Yamcha, Gohan, Vegeta, Frieza, Piccolo, Goku, and Super Saiyan Goku! <laughs> which is of course going to be uh, one of the most powerful ones. Uh, da -da -da. Warcraft's place in the universe, whenever it actually happened. The t-shirt, and the story about the Hulk. Oh, I do like this because the, this Hulk story kind of explains different versions of the Hulk that have happened over the time. Savage Hulk, Grey Hulk, uh, Green Scar, and Professor Hulk. Um, the 1990s was Professor Hulk, which was Hulk in t-shirts and pants and actually wearing glasses and talking because it was Banner in control of the Hulk body. He was never as powerful, but he um, obviously had his intel intelligence to make up for it. The, the crit for power... I'm not too sure about that being... Well, you know what? Q figs, I do like them. They're a nice big figure. It um, took a fair amount of space in the crate, but um, they still managed to fill it out with a lot more stuff. I love the Dragon Ball item. I like the t-shirt because it's a grey design and it's got a really nice detail to it. Um, the mitt, I'm glad to have, even though they're going to be making a recall for it. And I'm sure they're not going to be replacing it in any way, shape, or form. They're just going to recall it for safety purposes. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know how that's going to go down well with the Loot Crate fans. I'm sure, do you know what they'll probably do? They'll put out a request for people to re return it, but most people won't even bother. And <laughs> they'll probably just have to essentially make sure that everybody gets the warning to remind them not to actually hold oven hot plates with the uh, mitt because I've seen pictures of it actually burned and melted which is pretty impressive uh, considering it's meant to be flame retardant or fire retardant or heat retardant in some way shape or form but um, everything has its limits and it's just they probably obviously haven't tested it to the height of uh, normal people's usage so that was the power crate power why don't I get the right way around power which is kind of well timed for the uh, this month because Powers Season 2 is actually out and people can check it out on the PlayStation Network. I'm a big fan of it and I will be watching through it. I'm trying to get a podcast together of going through the Power episodes as they release as well as a Preacher podcast. So if you're interested in that, make sure to comment underneath and tell me that you would like to hear uh, me exposing on comparison of Powers to the TV series and the comic books and how well the show would be made and a little bit about behind the scenes and the production of it and of course about the creators uh, Avon Oming and um, essentially anybody else who was working on the show um, I, I got into the show because Eddie Gizzard was fucking fantastic in the first season and I really think a lot of people have missed out on it because they haven't actually yeah, because it was on a very very bizarre limited release schedule or release window or release space it was only on the playstation network properly so uh, now that it's actually broadcast in the uk it's actually on channel 5 if you haven't uh, caught it on uk broadcast yet which then means you can get it on 5 on demand and um it also means you can get season 2 if you're on the playstation network and i'm sure there's other ways that it's being broadcast now that it's actually being out into the world so yeah, this has been the Power Crate for Loot Crate here on Past Teacher Skin. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, there will be a lot more crates this week because they're all lit and they're all arriving. So I will be posting them up as fast as I can to try and play catch up for you guys. So until the next video, I will see you all soon. Bye-bye! Mm -hmm.